Welcome back guys to another one. Today it's gonna be an easy one, arguably the best CPU air cooler on 120mm heatsink money can buy, the famous Noctua U12A, now finally in Chromax Black treatment. So let's play with it. So why do I love it so much? Well it's the only single tower heatsink that I know which has 7 heat pipes and it's under 160mm tall. It comes bundled with Noctua's most advanced fans to date and it was just a matter of time until it received the sexy Chromax Black treatment. Besides the paint job, the other new info to mention is the fact that it comes already compatible with Intel's new LGA1700 socket out of the box. Also with this release Noctua now offers a new line of heatsink covers which are specifically made for the regular U12A and of course the Chromax Black variant of today. The asking price is a premium one because you get exactly what you pay for, maximum quality from any point of view. It's 10 bucks more expensive than the regular U12A anyway, but at this price range you have an easy decision if the big boy D15 will not fit your case, nor the D15S, then the U12A at the magical number of 158mm tall is a clear winner. As for the new heatsink covers, they all retail for around 20 bucks. The new Chromax Black treatment is very obvious from the packaging as well, where Noctua are masters at branding and displaying the specs of their products. Security is tight with the heatsink cocoon in the middle of the packaging, while the accessory box acts as a top cover. All the accessories are stored neatly inside with a quick visual inventory on the cover. As I mentioned, the U12A Chromax Black comes out of the box Intel LGA1700 socket ready and you can see the designation on the Intel backplate and on the appropriate instruction booklet. Even the new plastic spacers are colored in blue. Now for the fans, which are the most advanced 120mm they have ever made to date. They have all the hallmarks that we know from Noctua and with the Chromax Black treatment they have such an industrial but imposing look to them. They feature the amazing magnetic oil based hydrodynamic bearings rotor technology called SSO2. Then the blades have metal reinforcements and flow acceleration channels in order to lower the vortex noise and achieve higher airflow efficiency. As we know Noctua builds their products with incredible quality control and dust tight tolerances. As you can see the blades sit at just half a mil from the frame, most fans are over 2 mm and above. When they spin there is a challenge to overcome called impeller creep, which basically means that the blades may touch the frame due to stretching. To overcome this Noctua developed a new material called Sterox, which is a liquid crystal polymer material that has much better dimensional stability and less creep as compared to conventional variants such as ABS, PA, PBT etc. The silicon gasket on each corner can be removed and replaced with any color you desire from their AVP1 lineup. I will link those below in the description if you are interested. Then the power cables are fully braided but they are only 20 cm long. But this is of course on purpose to eliminate cable clutter since it will perfectly reach the CPU fan ports with ease on any motherboard. Now let's have a look at the sexy heatsink of the U12A Chromax Black which measures 158mm tall, 125mm wide and 58mm in depth. On its own it weighs 760 grams. Adding the extra fans brings the total weight to 1.2 kg and increases the depth to 112mm. It has 50 aluminium fins which are secured into place by 7 6mm thick copper nickel plated heat pipes, which is still an incredible spec for any air cooled heatsink. As always the copper nickel plated base plate has an almost mirror polish finish to it. The machining, soldering and craftsmanship are ridiculously good as per any Noctua product. With the fans attached the U12A Chromax Black is a perfect item for any stealth build. LEGO time. Since Noctua released the Secure Firm 2 Multi Socket Mounting Kit, the installation process is really easy regardless of the platform you use. On AMD's AM4, the first step is to retain the stock motherboard backplate after you remove the front plastic bracket. Then attach the grey AM4 plastic spacers. Bolt down the metal plates in the correct orientation. Apply the thermal paste and install the U12A heatsink with its asymmetrical side facing the RAM area. Thanks to the access groove on this side, secure down the heatsink. There are no clearance issues whatsoever in any direction so far. 
install the fans and if your motherboard has only one CPU fan header available, you can use the included Y splitter. Now for the final clearance check, as you can see everything is perfect, especially that there is no height limit on the RAM area. As I mentioned before, if you are after a stealthier build, this U12A Chromax Black is the perfect option. Now it's a great opportunity to talk and install the new heatsink covers, which are specifically made for the U12A series. As you can see, you can choose from three variants, where the HC7 comes with a multicolored inlay system. All of them are made from metal for the outer housing, have this magnetic top cover that uses this proprietary metal securing clamp and have plenty of rubber pads to not scratch your heatsink and further reduce any vibrations. Thus installation is really easy, just attach the grey front inner plate and secure it with the metal clip. Finally slide in the metal housing and done. Don't forget to experiment with the multicolored inlays if you get the HC7. Just be aware that these heatsink covers will add a few millimeters on top of your cooler, so double check if your case accepts the extra height. You can even lift the fans a bit more to make them flush with a top cover if you desire. Testing time. As always, let's start in order of CPU load difficulty. First up is the Cinebench R15 test. On the left we have the CPU in stock form, while on the right we have it overclocked. At this tier level, it's very hard to distinguish purely based on the performance index, since all of these air coolers like the D15, D15S, U14S, U12A are so close to one another. Alas, the U12A Chromax Black is still the best 120mm single tower heatsink out there. Cinebench R20 is a more modern, up-to-date, multi-core benchmark suit, so naturally we will see a bigger load and thus a larger temperature figure than the R15 one. The whole package of the U12A behaves really well again. Sometimes R20 proves to be as stressful as ADA64, so the overall hierarchy is preserved. Then Rise of the Tomb Raider is not as stressful as a synthetic torture test, but a great indicator of real life usage. As you can see, everything is perfect here. Then the noise output is what you would expect, silent even in medium to high load scenarios. Also here is a noise sample for you in various RPM points. Well guys, there you have it. Plain and simple, the U12A Chromax Black, for me at least, is the best single tower 120mm CPU cooler ever made. The new paint job was a logical step for Noctua to release it and it quite suits the U12A. This cooler is not about pure performance since if you do massive overclocking then the D15, D15S, U14S make more sense because here it's all about the perfect balance in every department, cooling, noise output, max quality, zero interference all around the socket area. The fans alone are a work of art and nothing gets close to them from an equilibrium point of view. Yes, everything is expensive here, but you get everything you paid for. Thank you for watching guys and I hope you enjoyed the video and please don't forget to interact with the famous subscribe and like buttons. See you in the next one. Alex out.